Okay, thank you very much, Dad, for joining us. Hi, everybody at Australia Online Market. Again, thank you, Zoe, for organising the forum. So, guys, it's a little bit later than what I had hoped, but I'm here with the second post, and I have our guest star, Super Dad, Melbourne's favourite naturopath, John Katsikis. And as we mentioned earlier, John is going to be answering a few questions for us today uh, in our little five-minute mini interview on gut health. So that's what we're talking about. Now, by way of a quick intro, um, John has been a, a naturopath and homeopath for nearly 50 years working in the Paran area of Victoria in Australia for our international guests. And he is so knowledgeable, guys. I think aside from the fact that he's my father, one of the things I really do admire about dad is he's always researching. He's always reading the latest um, information, the latest health news, and always keeping ahead of all of the science and technology that's going on with health products and health treatments. Um, he has had thousands and thousands of clients and patients over the years and really made um, positive changes in their health and in their lives. So enough from me. Uh, Dad, welcome and thank you for joining us today. It, thank you. And thank you for this amazing introduction. You're extremely biased, but you are lovely and I thank you. <laughs> I am biased. Okay. All right. Well, let's get right into it. So guys, mini interview today on gut health. Question number one for you, Dad, and I'll just bring speak of you in. Um, so... Question number one is, I, I feel like we are bombarded with a plethora of information on probiotics. There's so many different types of probiotics. What should we be taking? What should we not be taking? Are they even any good for us at all? That's my first question to you, please. That's an excellent question. And it opens up a subject that um, I think many people would like to have the answer to. Uh, we are, as you say, being bombarded with um, ads on television about taking probiotics. And most of the ads that you see are for the various lactobacillus strains, so lactobacillus acidophilus strains, and the bifidobacteria strains. And some of them are good and some of them are bad, but I have no doubt that all the commercial companies that make probiotic bacteria uh, consisting of lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacteria are using very, very good strains that actually work and colonize the intestine. However, the proper way to do it would be to have a stool analysis where you send some of the feces away and they um, culture uh, the feces and they grow colonies of the various germs and they then separate and clean up and segregate the colonies so that they can identify them. And then they say, uh, this is what you have growing inside you. This is what you should have growing inside you. And some of them may be pathogenic bacteria. Some of them may be a, a, a lack of certain things like not enough E. coli or not enough Saccharomyces boulardii and so on. And then you know exactly what you are doing. However, one of the good things that probiotics do, and when I say probiotics now, I mean the common things that you see on television, which are the lactobacillus acidophilus strains and the bifidobacteria strains. So one of the good things that these strains do is they control the growth of the pathogenic bacteria, which means by taking them, you reduce the growth of the pathogenic bacteria, you reduce the toxins that these bacteria produce, and you end up feeling better. And one way of doing this is to take them for two or three weeks and then stop suddenly. And if you feel that you felt better while you were taking the probiotics and you don't feel as good when you stop them, then you should continue them for a long while to go. The uh, big thing about these um, um, commercially available preparations is that they're variously uh, 15 billion, 20 billion, 25 billion, 35 billion, not so long ago, we had a strain that was 450 billion bacteria. But we now have something that is absolutely phenomenal. It is a strain of the best probiotics and bifidobacteria together with the food that they require. They come together in a double little desiccated sachet and the food is inulin 
and uh, maize resistant starch. Now the inulin multiplies the bacteria by tenfold. The maize resistant starch multiplies the bacteria by fivefold. And so when you consider that these bacteria in the sachets, when you chop up the top of the sachets and put them in a bit of water and let them relax for two or three minutes before you drink them, when you consider that these bacteria will be multiplied 50 times, the final result is not 10, 20, 30, 35, not even 450 billion, but an incredible 1,500 billion. And that is a very, very significant number. And it will go a long way towards controlling the growth of the um, um, Streptococcus and Staphylococcus, which are the nasty bacteria that you want to avoid. Now, occasionally, sometimes these bacteria that are in there uh, do require some serious antibiotics. And here at the compounding pharmacy, we do a lot of prescriptions for very specialized antibiotics that don't get absorbed into the body, but remain in the gut and kill those pathogenic bacteria as they go through the alimentary canal. So that's the story on this bombardment of uh, probiotics. The, the bigger the number, the better it is, so long as they are of good strains, which I repeat, I'm sure that all of them are. Dad. So my next question is, all right, that's the probiotic story and that explains the bombardment, but what else can we be doing for our, for good gut health? Well, there's many things. Some are simple, some are more complicated, but one of the simple things that we can do for gut health is to take a good fiber supplement. Now, the reason I say this is because in every newspaper, magazine article that talks about this, it says, that here in Australia, we just don't consume enough fiber. And of course, fiber, we're talking about things like oats, we're talking about things like uh, celery and asparagus and zucchinis, um, vegetables that have a lot of fiber to give us. And taking a, a teaspoon of good fiber a day will go a long way to improving gut health and the motility of the intestine so that we can get rid of the toxins day after day after day. Of course, there's more. Colostrum. Colostrum, as you probably know, is the first immunity that babies receive. Uh, mammals produce colostrum before the milk is produced. And what it does is it contains probiotics and prebiotics, and it is high in protective antibodies and white blood cells which destroy bacteria. Yeah? It's a nutrient rich full fluid, which is produced by these mammals immediately after giving birth. And it's loaded with growth and tissue repair factors. And because of that, it uh, repairs the gut, it helps the gut, and it is an amazing supplement to take when your gut is not 100%. So when we talk about IBS, um, um, Crohn's disease, etc., colostrum is important to take along with some fiber and some prebiotics, now, and some probiotics as well. And finally, of course, we have aloe vera. Now, aloe vera, as most people know, has a healing action on the skin, and it's the same in the alimentary tract. So it helps to decrease irritation in the stomach and the intestines, yeah? So aloe vera juice helps people with irritable bowel and other inflammatory disorders of the intestines, and there is a particular product that contains not only aloe vera, but some good fruit derived antioxidants, which helps to heal and protect the gut. Now, again, in addition to that, and this is such a large subject, we can be talking about it all day. There are food sensitivities that people may be sensitive to some foods that they should avoid. Uh, the, the major um, culprits in this are uh, milk and dairy. So when we're thinking about um, reducing allergens, we start with milk and dairy and eggs, yeah. Um, but some people may be allergic or sensitive to green beans or strawberries or, or something innocuous like this. And so there is a way to determine this precisely by having a food sensitivity test, which actually 
determines with great accuracy what foods we are sensitive to. Finally, there are all the various diets, you know, the FODMAP diet and the um, fructose-free diet and uh, the different diets for different people with different conditions, and they're all available that we can recommend to people, etc. All of this is of the utmost importance because they have recently uh, made a, a strong association uh, with the gut toxins and the mind. And in fact, there is a book called The um, Gut and Psychology Syndrome. So that's G-A-P-S, GAPS. It's by Dr. Natasha uh, Campbell McBride, who is an eminent, eminent um, uh, scientist. And she's got a book called The GAPS Diet, and it talks about how it affects uh, the mind. Uh, ADD, ADHD, depression, schizophrenia, all this caused by imbalances in the gut. So naturopaths have for years said that all disease begins in the gut. And when you consider that the gut is what controls what you absorb, it's not only the good food that you eat, but it's what you absorb from the good food that you eat. And so having a healthy gut is of paramount, paramount importance. Awesome. The really good answers. Thank you so much, Dad. And I know I know you could, I've, I've actually been to some of Dad's talks, guys, when he's done the public speaking circuit on health. I know he can fill two hours full of gut health. Um, I know I've taken up more than five minutes of your time, Dad, but if we were to just leave everyone with one or two thoughts just in your experience as a naturopath with all the clients that you've had, any last little things to add before we end the interview? Look, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's important to have some live food in your diet. Uh, you know, there are some families that day after day after day after day have casserole after casserole after casserole. And when you think about cooking food, of course, you destroy all the vitamins. And so it's of the utmost importance to have plenty of fresh vegetables and fruit. Um, it, it's important, some of them, to be raw, to be eaten raw. And so we're talking about having a little bit of protein about the size of your palm. Uh, and if you're a vegetarian, then you know what proteins to get to replace uh, chicken, fish, uh, meat, etc. And the rest, all vegetables, lots of fresh vegetables, some of them cooked, many of them raw, to ensure that we get proper nutrition, and we get all the live enzymes inside of us so that we can have a happy life and a happy gut. Okay, lovely. Thank you very, very much, Dad. Guys, that's it from Dad for today. So that was gut health in five minutes-ish today. Um, as a reminder, tomorrow we've got John. I booked him in for the whole week, like I said, and tomorrow we're talking about arthritis and joint health. So that will be a good one to tune into as well. So that's all for today. My third post for the day, guys, I'll be putting up some of these recommendations that um, we've just discussed with Dad. And until then... Um, have a lovely evening, everyone. And Dad, thank you again so much. That was awesome. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.